Hello again and welcome back. Now there are two ways to get a research question. The first is what I call the walk in the park method. The sky is blue, the sun's shining, the mind is in free association mode and bang, the idea is conceived. Ignore the fact that it might have been done before or it might be not doable at all and let's proceed in sublime ignorance. Now, there's also a proper way to determine your research theme, and that is in the context of the current discussions on the topic, which, if you've been following the advice of the previous podcast on finding materials, is exactly what you've been doing. So now, the first thing to do is to find a theme. Now, a theme is not the same as a research question. It's more like a frame of reference. And there are several forms it could take. It could be country-oriented, Country X and the United Nations Security Council, for example. It could be institution-oriented. How is the composition of the UN Security Council determined? And it could be problem-oriented, a conflict involving a Security Council member. Now, once we have the theme, and I expect you're close to that stage already, it's time to do something simple, to think. What are the possible questions? What are the possible answers? And what else might impact on my questions or my answers? Now only then is it time to get down to the literature. Now you've probably already made an initial selection, but now is time to refine that and to actually start reading. Remember that you're not here to replicate each article that you read, you're just looking for information to answer your questions. So let's pause and see how we can read more efficiently and effectively. Let's start with the abstract. What is the author trying to get you to believe? Next, we look at the introductory paragraphs. These are often very useful because authors try to place themselves in a debate on the topic. So it's a free ride to other dimensions on your theme, including those you may not have thought of, in which case go back to the jottings that you've been making. Next, ask yourself what are the author's arguments and what kind of evidence is used, and if there is any, what self-criticism. And, and here is another free ride coming, how does he or she deal with the arguments and evidence of those who argue differently? Repeat this a few times, looking at your theme from different angles, and you should be ready now to narrow the theme down to one or two, or three if you like, research questions. Now, let's see if you can formulate a hierarchy in these questions. A rational order, a chronology, a cause and effect, a problem and solution. And see, in general terms, if you have any possible answers, well, you should have by now if you've been reading the literature, and write them down in question form. And don't be too specific. Well, now you've done something really very clever. You've actually formulated research hypotheses, and that impresses university professors, and it might profess or impress some of your friends as well. At this point, I usually like to formulate a non-hypothesis. What is it probably not? It helps keep the alternatives on the agenda when reading the literature. You can always delete it at a later stage if it looks rather silly. So, now you're ready to start. You have research questions and hypotheses. You have the academic literature and any original supporting documentation you might lead. And you can always adjust your research questions as necessary as you progress. After all, they're not carved in stone. But we haven't quite finished with the research questions yet. Many people think that the conclusion is the last thing that you write, but it isn't. It should be those few sentences representing your research question. What you conclude at the end should also have appeared at the beginning. So now you adjust what you were going to say. Go back and adjust the questions so as to pretend that that is what you were interested all along. Don't feel guilty, we all do it, and a good start and a nice conclusion 
and you'll have your professors absolutely purring with pleasure. So, now we've disposed of the research question. In the next podcast, we'll look at how to write.